into the digging, I need to get, tell you guys a little story, a little background about this new permission. I met a really awesome lady. I'm going to call her Miss W. Uh, she gave me permission to detect her yard. Now, I haven't even dug a wheat penny out of this yard. I don't know where the coins went, just not there. But I got on some incredible relics. Probably some of the oldest stuff that I'll ever dig in this area that I live. But Mrs. W has an incredible story. She has a love for history. She's a writer. She's fluent in five languages. She is just a unique, wonderful individual. But she was born in Scotland in 1945. Now the reason why she was born there, her parents are both Polish. They had to flee Poland as a result of World War II. And uh, she shared some really great stories uh, about her family and her mother and father, but uh, her father was fluent in German, and after fleeing Poland, he ended up on the shores of the North Sea in Scotland, listening to the radio broadcast coming from German U-boats, trying to pick up some important information. And um, so Mrs. W ended up being born in Scotland, 1945. So World War II has a definite connection. It really shaped the events of her life. I got some great World War II relics out of her yard and some older stuff. So check this out. Well, I'm at a very brand new permission and I think it's going to be good. This is about the fifth signal that I've done. I don't know what that is. It may be just a dog tag. It could be something else. Let's see if we can clean it up and get anything off of it. Okay, so this is what cleaned up off of that little piece that I found. W.T. Moore, Andrews, North Carolina. Now, did a little research about Mr. Moore, and he was um, one of the early builders. This this comes from 19, the 19 teens to the mid 1920s. And this is a tool check tag. And he owned a large construction company. He built several of the bridges in our area. And I suspect he even built Miss W's house or had a hand in it anyway. Tool check tag would have been attached to a tool and workers in the company um, as they check tools out this number would have been recorded by their name or their employee number so Mr. Moore knew where his tools were and who was responsible for them. Kind of cool. Most of these things actually don't have um, as much information as this does with a, with a town and a, and a name. They just had some initials or something that the company would recognize so pretty cool that it has enough information to get a little story off of it this is going to stay with with uh, miss w because i do believe he had a hand in building her house all right i think that's a trigger to a toy gun it's heavy though pretty solid so i don't think it's a real gun hey bud that helper here showed up on the... Oh, wow, this is great. Check out that site. <clears throat> Not even flipped it over yet. And I think that's going to be another military button. Yep, there it is. Looks like a... Another variation on the great seal button. I'll have to clean that up a little bit better. That's awesome. Last one I found didn't have any back marks left or a shank. So that's the first one for me with a shank. Very cool. Okay, here's the button. And man, did it clean up nice. It is really beautiful. Got it cleaned up. I've soaked it in a little bit of olive oil. Really makes those things pop. Now here's the back mark and the shank. I don't know if you can make it out, but right there at the bottom, you see New York? That dates this button. Um, City Button Works is what's across the top. So this is more than likely a World War II button. Now, I just wanted to show you this for comparison. This is the button I dug earlier this year. Um, the first Great Seal button, and you can tell that it's larger. I suspect this is an overcoat button 
and this could have been off of a uh, shirt uh, or like a, a pocket or something even on a coat um, but this I actually just found this out the back is really really crusty right and I couldn't get any detail off of it but after soaking it in olive oil you see right there at the top I can make out three letters H O R and there's a little dot did a little research on bat marks this button it was made between 1902 and 1935 so more than likely this is a World War One button and it was made by I think Horman I think if I can remember correctly and it was made in Philadelphia so cool I didn't think I'd get any identifying information off of this one but I did love these old buttons it's so hard not getting super excited because I am surrounded by houses and very curious people but I'm more excited than my voice shows that is the first button that in any way resembles a flat button to me I have no idea what's on that but there's something on there I think let me get this cleaned up all right well I don't see anything on it and it is pretty crusty but you can see where a shank was there on the back still not sure how old that is but it's cool nonetheless here is my very first flat button uh, all cleaned up now I gotta be honest with you I I really did not expect this to turn out to be as old as what it is um, but after talking to some folks this button is dated between 1800 and 1840. Now they can tell that just off the design uh, or the type of button that it is. It's a brass button with a little bit of copper content. Now, no identifying marks on it, so I would have been extremely happy uh, with just this button. But the next button is even more incredible. That is awesome. This is my second flat button ever, and it's got gold gilt on it. And these things are going to date 1800 to about 1840. I'm going to be kind of gentle with that and see if I can get a little bite mark on it. Very cool. This is the oldest things I've ever dug. Love them. Holy smokes, guys. Look at the back mark on this button. All the gold gilt still on there. I was able to identify it and date it. The top part reads A Benedict. And the bottom says extra gilt. Well, this turned out to be what I consider my best find ever. Um I'm extremely fortunate that this gold gill back mark remains on this button. The name on it is A. Benedict. A stood for Aaron. Now, what's incredible about this button is the history behind who Aaron Benedict was. Right before the War of 1812, there was a need for buttons, uh, uniform buttons. And so Mr. Benedict, living in Waterbury, Connecticut, gathered all the brass pots and, and everything he could find that was brass and began producing buttons. Now, later on, the company, his company changed the name several times, but it ended up being the Waterbury Button Company. This is the company that produced an enormous amount of military buttons, um, from the Civil War right on up. It's a very common name um, on buttons, but this is one of the first um, of the buttons that Mr. Benedict made. And it's a little bit on the rare side. Um, they don't pop up that often. So here's the date on this thing. 1823 to 1829. That predates the vast majority of white settlement in the area that I'm hunting. Um, so to find this uh, blew me away. 
never anticipated something this old. Uh, it's probably going to be one of my favorite finds um, of all time. Maybe I'll dig something older one day. You never know. I wonder if Mr. Benedict would get a kick out of the fact we're talking about his buttons 200 years later. Well, who doesn't like a little bit of bling? And I think that's what I got. My phone's so dirty I can't even tell if I'm filming. There it is. Little bit of bling. Maybe it's old though, who knows? Let's clean that up and check it out. I don't know if you could hear it in my voice when I dug this, but I was a little bit skeptical about what I had. Now, to be honest with you, I'm going to show you right now why I suspected this was 1960s, 70s. You see that? The band stretches. In my mind, that meant that I was looking at something fairly modern, but this turns out to be a really great piece. Now, the name inside says American Queen, Pittman, and Keeler. These guys actually invented this style of band. Um, initially, these bracelets, these American Queen bracelets, were meant for girls and babies. But there was such a demand that they began to produce them uh, for adults as well. And this was an extremely popular gift prior to World War II uh, for soldiers to give to their sweethearts before they left. And you can tell this is monogrammed. Um, now, I don't know if that's a J or an I. I can't quite make it out. But um, more than likely, this was a gift. Um, to a sweetheart, you know, and I find it interesting too that I'm finding it with that same spot. So who knows, but this is gold plated. Um, and the, the mechanism of the band I think is really cool, uh, pretty ingenious. And so these were hugely popular it, it, all the way from early 1900s right up to the 1950s. Uh, this this uh, type of bracelet in many various designs, but pretty neat little piece of history. Y'all stick with me. I have a feeling Mrs. W's yard hasn't given up its last story yet. Thanks for watching.